Hi, I'm Rachel James, and I have the coolest job in the world because I get to protect the marine environment. Growing up at the beach, I've always had a great love for marine biology. Um, I think I decided I wanted to be a marine biologist when I was about 10 years old and I haven't changed my mind since then. I just think there's so much to explore in the field of marine biology. The thing I love about science is there's always something more to research, always something more to learn and always something more to study. I love the work that I do day to day because I get to analyse the population of fish in Queensland and I get to put incredibly important scientific research into management decisions. My undergrad at Griffith University definitely gave me the skills that I need to be able to do my job every day now. My honours research looked at the benthic colonisation of artificial reefs in southeast Queensland. So I went scuba diving on a range of different reefs, artificial reefs that had been put in place in Moreton Bay and Harvey Bay, and then identified all the different coral species to compare the different artificial reefs. I had a metre by metre um, quadrat that was attached to a GoPro. So I would take a photo of the quadrat and then look at the percentage distribution of different species that were growing on the artificial reef. I actually got help identifying the coral species from the Queensland Museum. So that was a great help because I hadn't had a whole lot of experience identifying different types of coral species in the past and there's a whole lot more coral species than there are fish species in my job now. There's been previous studies at Griffith University that's used this same method of analysis and keeping with these same methods we can analyse change over time at these artificial reefs. A part of my honours research was looking at the effect of different surface orientations on these artificial reef structures. So we looked at sloped surfaces, the vertical surfaces and the horizontal surfaces of the artificial reef structures. So you can see here after five months there wasn't a whole lot growing on the horizontal surfaces. However on the sloped and vertical surfaces there was quite a bit of growth. After seven months there was more growth of algae and certain ascidians, bryozoans and coral species. At ten months you can actually see quite a lot of colonisation. So you can see quite a few hydroids and sponge species here. So it was really interesting looking at how fast things actually grow on these artificial reefs. And then 10 months later, there's a whole marine ecosystem formed out of nowhere. This kind of research shows us that what was growing on these artificial reefs is quite different to what was growing on a natural reef nearby. And it also tells us that these artificial reefs are colonized quite quickly. It's important to do this kind of research in order to strategically place these artificial reefs in a spot that will be best for the environment and also best for people that want to fish on these artificial reefs and get the most out of them. I usually go to the Great Barrier Reef at least once a year and when I'm there I'm always looking for things I haven't seen before, new species and I think having a marine biologist background makes the experience more enjoyable because instead of just looking at a wide variety of pretty colours, I actually get to see what species I'm looking at and look at the change in the reef over time. To become a marine biologist, you definitely have to get out in the water, you have to put the hours in, um, do lots of unpaid volunteering perhaps, and just really get that experience up before getting a paid job. So I'd recommend throughout your undergrad degree definitely getting into the field as much as possible so when you're ready to graduate you have all that experience behind you. 
So volunteering at the Queensland Museum definitely opened up my eyes more to the world of science and I learned a lot from all the experts that work there. The ultimate question for me in my line of work is how are we going to sustainably manage fish populations into the future?